Swire and James, and two years later, uh, McLeod uh, uh, in uh, Children in England uh, described uh, a syndrome of pulmonary uh, focal hyperlucency uh, uh, due to bronchial disease. In the case of uh, Swire and James, uh, uh, the bronchial disease was uh, bronchiectasis. Uh, in the case of uh, McLeod uh, uh, syndrome, uh, the bronchial process uh, uh, was a type of uh, bronchiolitis uh, uh, obliterans, uh, so that is that uh, the distal airway was involved. Uh, the commonality of uh, all these cases of the Swire James McLeod uh, syndrome uh, is uh, that an area of the lung or the entire lung may be hyperlucent. Uh, and uh, when we study uh, such uh, patients, uh, uh, we uh, almost invariably see evidence of air trapping. In other words, uh, the hyperlucent uh, area of the lung uh, is associated uh, with a restricted uh, diaphragmatic motion and sometimes uh, uh, with uh, abnormalities in the development uh, of the affected lung. Uh, in the cases of uh, Sawyer James uh, McLeod, uh, either a history of a type of pneumonia, particularly a necrotizing pneumonia, or a history of a foreign body uh, may uh, be uh, obtained and uh, that uh, will lead uh, to the selective involvement uh, of uh, the bronchial tree. Again, the bronchial tree can affect the entire lung, a lobe, a segment, or several segments of the lung. This is a, a teenager uh, who gave a history of uh, a repeated hemoptysis. Uh, note that in the frontal view of the chest, uh, the lower half of the left lung uh, is uh, oligemic. These uh, three images uh, correspond to a close-up of the uh, left uh, lower lobe but to your left, uh, a bronchogram in the middle that revealed the uh, uh, cylindrical and some saccular bronchiectasis affecting the left lower lobe. Uh, and uh, uh, the specimen uh, was removed and I injected uh, the uh, pulmonary artery of this specimen and uh, showed uh, that the pulmonary arteries were patent uh, and no intrinsic abnormality was seen in the pulmonary artery. So the question is uh, why, if we have uh, normal uh, pulmonary arteries, we don't see the markings uh, on the plain uh, chest uh, ring. This is another case uh, where the entire right uh, lung is uh, small and hypovascular. These are four images uh, of the uh, right lung in the frontal uh, projection, the top row and the bottom row is in the lateral projection and inspiration expiration. Note uh, that uh, the uh, right uh, dome of the diaphragm uh, does uh, not uh, rise uh, as uh, we see it uh, on the left side. Uh, this is indicative of some degree of air trapping uh, that suggests uh, the presence of bronchitis. When doing a perfusion scan, as seen in this case, uh, the uh, uh, posterior as well as the anterior view, uh, uh, there was uh, no uh, perfusion of the right uh, lung. Selective right uh, bronchial uh, arteriography revealed a very large inter intercostal bronchial trunk uh, and uh, very prominent uh, bronchial arteries in the central portion of the right uh, lung. Uh, one could also see some uh, reflux of uh, contrast uh, into a small right uh, pulmonary artery. Oblique views of a selective uh, right uh, uh, bronchial angiographic examination shows uh, uh, abundant uh, uh, vessels uh, and uh, evidence of uh, precapillary anastomosis uh, between the bronchial arteries and the pulmonary artery. All this is indicative of extensive bronchial disease. Uh, this patient had uh, extensive bronchiectasis affecting the entire uh, right uh, bronchial. In this uh, patient, uh, uh, there was a history also of hemoptysis, uh, and one can see in the frontal view of the chest uh, uh, in inspiration uh, that there is a focal hyperlucency involving the right uh, mid-lung uh, field. Uh, uh, it almost looked uh, as a mid-lung window, which is the lucency uh, normally observed in many individuals around the right minor fissure. But this is a, usually a small area, and it is the only area that uh, shows decrease uh, and uh, small uh, vessels uh, uh, in a normal lung, uh, the so-called mid-lung window. In this case, uh, there was a large uh, area in the right uh, mid-lung that one has to assume is either related uh, to obstruction of the pulmonary arterial flow, such as embolisms, or uh, due to uh, uh, air trapping uh, with increased plasma resistance, uh, as seen with the Swire and McLeod syndrome. The middle, middle image, image uh, shows uh, uh, the uh, same patient in expiration. Note, Note uh, that, that, that the left uh, dome uh, is uh, higher, higher than, than the right. right uh, the right, right uh, dome moves uh, slower, slower and has a restricted, restricted motion. motion. Uh, the uh, the mediastinum is shifted, shifted to the, the normal, normal lung, but it's the left, left side, side. And, and all, all these findings are pathognomonic of air trapping in the right lung. 
a pulmonary angiogram revealed uh, normal pulmonary arteries and veins uh, of the left uh, lung. A right the pulmonary angiogram showed uh, normal arteries in the right upper lobe and right base, but in the right mid-lung field, uh, note uh, that there are very few branches of the pulmonary artery which appear quite uh, small. No filling defects uh, were noted uh, in the pulmonary angiographic examination. A selective right the bronchial arteriogram uh, showed uh, the uh, bronchial hypervascularity uh, that uh, is uh, best uh, seen in the uh, lower third of the right uh, lung. This is an oblique uh, view of the bronchial angiographic examination showing uh, uh, enlargement of the right uh, bronchial arteries uh, with uh, uh, marked uh, increased uh, vascularity. We did bronchography and cine bronchography in this uh, patient. Note uh, the extensive uh, bronchiectasis of the uh, uh, right uh, base, uh, and these uh, bronchi collapsed uh, during expiration. And uh, this uh, is uh, the basic mechanism for the uh, oligemic uh, lung. In other words, uh, in inspiration, air goes in. In expiration, uh, some of the air is trapped uh, by complete collapse of the airway. And that collapse can be in the central airway that is due to bronchiectasis uh, or can be in the distal airway as a result of bronchiolitis. Uh, the increase uh, vascular resistance uh, is uh, because uh, the lung remains uh, inflated like uh, 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 one would see with a balloon uh, inside the lung and uh, blood goes uh, to areas uh, where vascular resistance is normal. So therefore there is a flow diversion to normal areas of the lung and the area of hyperlucency uh, therefore is the result uh, uh, not uh, of a congenital or acquired uh, arterial abnormality but uh, due to focal increased vascular resistance. Uh, and uh, this is why we see the paradox uh, of uh, absent uh, or decreased uh, markings uh, on radiographs uh, and uh, normal arteries uh, when we do the specimen arteriography. This is a, uh, an individual who had a uh, uh, history uh, of uh, repeated pulmonary infections and hemoptysis. Uh, the plain radiograph shows uh, the left lung smaller than the right uh, and uh, marked reduction in the pulmonary markings of the left lung. In inspiration and expiration, we see evidence of a shift of the mediastinum, and this is because of air trapping on the left side of the... A pulmonary angiogram showed a normal arterial tree on the right side and poor perfusion of the left lung. In the venous phase of the angiographic examination, we see... A synchronous opacification of right pulmonary veins uh, and no filling of the left uh, pulmonary veins. Uh, the left lung is uh, completely uh, hyper. An oblique angiogram uh, shows uh, no evidence of focal obstruction of the left uh, pulmonary artery. Uh, the uh, left uh, pulmonary artery tapers uh, gradually, but there are no signs of uh, uh, thromboembolic disease, uh, nor evidence of uh, pulmonary branch stenosis. A selective left bronchial arteriogram shows uh, uh, increased uh, uniform hypervascularity typical of inflammatory changes of the left. A bronchographic examination revealed extensive uh, saccular and uh, cylindrical bronchiectasis affecting the entire left lung. This uh, is uh, the result of either a uh, silent uh, bronchial obstruction uh, such as from a foreign body or more commonly uh, due to a type of necrotizing pneumonia that affected the development uh, of the uh, left uh, bronchial tree. Uh, rarely uh, we may see uh, such uh, changes uh, due to uh, a congenital dysplasia of the bronchial tree. Most of the patients with Swire James McLeod syndrome uh, have had uh, early in life uh, or even late in life uh, an acquired uh, inflammatory uh, process uh, uh, with uh, uh, considerable damage uh, of the wall of the airway, central or distal. Here is a patient who had a relative normal looking chest in July of 1967. This is an expiratory film which shows that there is no significant demonstration of air trapping. However, the left lung is more loosened than the... His pulmonary angiogram showed no perfusion of the left lung and a normally perfused right lung. 
The venous phase of the angiogram again revealed the synchronous uh, filling of the uh, right pulmonary veins with absent filling of the left. A spot of the left uh, bronchial tree uh, revealed the clubbing of uh, bronchi uh, and uh, dilated uh, airway. Uh, this patient had uh, complete uh, destruction of uh, airways of the left uh, lung. That is, is another case uh, of the Swire James uh, syndrome. This is a patient who had uh, a history of uh, hemoptysis uh, and uh, the frontal chest rangiogram showed a prominent left hilus. Uh, the initial interpretation is that uh, we might be dealing with adenopathies. Uh, it was not uh, appreciated uh, that the right lung was hypoplastic and smaller. A pulmonary angiogram uh, revealed uh, flow retardation through the right lung and uh, we can now demonstrate uh, that uh, the prominent left hilus uh, is due to an enlarged uh, left uh, pulmonary artery and enlarged uh, left uh, pulmonary veins. Uh, all the right ventricular output uh, was uh, directed uh, towards the left lung. A late uh, phase of the angiogram uh, shows a persistent arterial phase on the right side, uh, opacification of the left lung, uh, filling of the left atrium, and no filling of right uh, pulmonary veins. Uh, uh, this patient had the uh, central uh, bronchiectasis of the right uh, lung and uh, total flow diversion to the left uh, lung. A late uh, phase of the angiogram uh, shows a persistent arterial phase on the right side, uh, opacification of the left lung, uh, filling of the left atrium, and no filling of right uh, pulmonary veins. Uh, uh, this patient had the uh, central uh, bronchiectasis of the right uh, lung and uh, total flow diversion to the left uh, lung. This is a child who gave a history of a hemoptysis, uh, and the right lung appeared uh, uh, hypovascular, uh, there was a shift of the mediastinum uh, to the left side, uh, uh, best observed uh, in expiration, although this film is taken in inspiration. A pulmonary angiogram uh, showed the hypoperfusion of the lower half of the A selective uh, right uh, bronchial arteriogram uh, revealed uh, the typical hypervascularity of inflammatory uh, airway uh, and uh, uh, evidence of uh, bronchopulmonary anastomosis. This is a photograph uh, of uh, the uh, specimen. Uh, a right lower lobectomy was uh, performed uh, and uh, upon opening of the airway we can see a foreign body inside uh, the distal uh, right lower bronchus. This is a close-up of the foreign body which represented a pine tree. Uh, this patient had aspirated a pine tree and uh, that led uh, to uh, inflammatory uh, bronchial disease uh, uh, is another uh, cause of the uh, Swire James uh, McLeod syndrome. 